and a bit of experience too. It's now time for well, the yeah, down to me. He's sparring with the New Zealand amateur heavyweight boxing champion, and of course sparring at that amateur level. We got a lunch rebel. All right, so we're set to go. This is scheduled for three rounds, as all our fights are. This one supposed to be an absolute war. Paul Gallon decked out in the uh, red trunks and in the blue is uh, Hicka Elliott from Team Rugby. Let's see how it goes here in the early going. Hicka kind of moving around with some strange movements, but boy, he looks like a fighter in there. And he also looks 100% confident and comfortable. Sneaky right hand over the top this time. Gallon, we know, is a hard guy. Let's see if he's going to open up at all here soon. Here he goes to the body. Good body shots. Here we go. Here we go. Pickett doesn't like being hit, but he's taking more shots. Look at Gallon way on the way. I told you, he's going to be the bell of the big beggars. Well, all right hands. Hicker Elliott showing some of that unorthodoxy probably from a karate background. Needs to set his feet a little bit more. Gallon has no problem. Left uppercut, right uppercut, left hook, right hand. Gallon back on the inside. He's on the assault, being tied up by Hicker. Hicker knows what he's doing in the ring. It amazes me that these uh, athletes from other sports are as well schooled as they are and know exactly what to do in there. Tying him up when a guy's coming in like that is what you're supposed to do or get out of there. Hicker now looking to throw his big right hand. He throws it right there, but it uh, kind of slides by the tummy of uh, a Gallon. Gallon on the assault. He wants to come in very hard with throwing wild shots. But when he gets inside, he goes to the body, back upstairs, comes with the uppercut. Gallon landing more punches right now than his Hick Elliott. Been trained by Mark Gabin out of Costa Zeus Gym in Rockdale, so he's uh, come here to rock the All Black Booker. Doesn't want to take too many of those body shots, does Elliott, because one of those can compress the ropes, and that can end the fight pretty quickly. Just got to be cautious when he's coming out of the clutch just there. He gets caught by those winging shots and another overhand right. And followed by a real good uppercut by Gallon. Gallon's winning this round, believe it or not, folks. Good straight left turn. Of course, he may have that martial art experience, but it's all different in the boxing because he, sometimes you put your weight too much on your back foot, you've got to keep coming forward. The balance is altogether different, as you well know, uh, Mike, and, and so it's causing a few problems, perhaps for Hiccup. But Gallon is just a hard guy. Absolutely. Hicker Elliott surprisingly behind already. Plenty of all black support there ringside here at the Woodstock, honey. Fight for life. And it's Gallon in the red going down to the ribs, doing the body work, trying to chop down that all black hooker tree. Coming upstairs and dominating from the get go. Lands a nice short right, clipping the nose. As you can see there, Hicker Elliott on the back foot of a very upright. Needs to change that body work sometimes from that mixed martial arts background. You can be too upright onto the back foot. Yeah, well, hitting just coming off the break or the clinch, if you're upright there, you can hit by that slice shot. Really good work there from Gallon. Note, he does that Tyson S. Right hand body shot, right uppercut. And he'll be getting the hard word in the corner. Well, I would expect to see Hicker now just, as I say, put his ears back and uh, let it go for the show right now. Gallon certainly got the first round. Nice shots inside, clean the blows, and many more of them. So here we go with round number two from Auckland, New Zealand. Glad that you can be with us wherever you're watching across the country or across to Australia. Nice little leaping left hook, right hand. Still not putting a lot of acid on it though. Hicker Elliott landed a good right hand that time. Hicker is in the blue, representing rugby. There's a shot by Gallon that lands back inside. Went to tackle him, but decided to come up with a right hand shot upstairs. That's a nice left hook by Hicker. That was a big up, though. No, that's a problem. Didn't back it up. That's a problem. He kind of admired it. He's missing as many as he's landing. Gallon's got some nice movement. He's moving the head up and down. Uh, his training has been excellent for this fight. This is a good show. He landed good punches. Two good combinations in Australia. There's the uppercut again by Gallon. Gallon really controlling the boxing aspect of this. You see the time remaining in this round. I think Elliot's got to stop trying to be a boxer now. He's got to find that mongrel inside him because he has to fight back to keep Gallon off him. Just yeah, got a fight. Yeah, it, it, exactly right. You're so right, Brownie. Just use the shoulder, come in on throw the right hands, low the right hands. There's a nice left hand shot by Gallon again that lands upstairs. Hicker trying to jab, but he doesn't want to jab. He should just throw the right hands now and try to catch Gallon and try to drop him. He must get respect, otherwise Gallon's just going to walk through those lighter shots. He needs to plant his feet. 
does hang around there, otherwise Gallon's just going to keep coming forward with those unorthodox winging shots. Good body shot there, oh, swinging left arm misses. That's strike one anyway. Back with the left hook comes uh, Gallon. And you notice when uh, Elliot comes in and throws his shot, he drops his left shoulder, drops his left hand. If Gallon were truly a trained professional fighter, he'd pick that up immediately. See the left hand? He comes in and he's wide open for right hand counter punch. Instead, Elliot's doing what I think he should continue to do. Just keep loading up right hands and try to catch this powerful Paul Gallon. Yeah, Gallon there for the right hook. He throws it. Hard to separate that round, though. But certainly Gallon looked to have landed the cleaner shots as we go to the towels. So for argument's sake, if we say it's one round each, we've got one round to go. The league boys will be saying that Gallon's been dominating, landing more of the punches. And I would agree with him. I think Elliot's got to get that uh, elusive eight count and he needs to set his feet and throw punches and a lot more of them. So therefore, Hicker Elliot's got a lot of work to do in this last round. You can see he has been bullied by the Aussie, pushed around in the ring, landing more body shots. Good uppercut, Gallon. Gallon's a guts. So now you need a knockout here for the man in blue from Rugby League. I mean, Gallon, 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 yes, you do. Gallon looks like a fighter to me, and Hicker looks like a great uh, all black who's, uh, you know, hasn't learned to fight as well as Gallon has. Hick is super tough in there. He can take a shot, but he needs to at least drop him in order to win this fight or at least uh, get back into it. The Gallon's out in front. Fight down on that mouth guard and start throwing punches with bad intentions. The corporate sponsor, round number three, Sky City. This is the third and final round. Paul Gallon in red. We have him out in front. I think he's won two rounds. Hick Elliott has got to do something very, very strong here to crawl back in the fight and get him all the Nothing to do with that. Nice stiff jab. Thomas jumped into his jab. Then he comes in and he's following up punches. You know, even when he misses, Hick is not following up. He throws one punch at a time and Gallon has got him times. That time he tried to throw a second punch, but he missed both of them. Stiff jab by Gallon. I gotta say, you don't throw clean uppercuts like that and Bob and Roy by accident. He's done his work in the gym, although limited, he's doing what he does and doing it well. He knows you can basically back him for part of this round. Well, both of these guys are gassed, but you know by the fact that who these men are, they're not gonna take any part of this. Big shot, big shot, the uppercut, the left hand was a power shot. He could try to land something, but his punches are smothered. On the inside, it's all Against a very hard man. Again, the right hand lands. Hicker comes back with a light left hook, which kind of spins ahead a little bit of Gallon, but it doesn't hurt him at all. Nice uppercut right behind the jab. And the difference in this fight is that Gallon has a jab, yep. Elliot doesn't. Gallon throws his punches and bunches. There it is, picking up points all the time, too. Oh, and that's that's the enough. story of the fight, too. He's really found a home with that uppercut. There's a left hook that landed as Hicker Elliott walked away. He's gassed, but Gallon is the one who's grinning down on his mouth guard and coming forward, not Hicker Elliott, who needs it. And I'll tell you, Gallon's a little gassed as well. These guys aren't leaving much on their shields as they go out with 15 seconds to go. They're both fighting hard, right to the belt. Great professional athletes, and Gallon is sure he can box. Hick has had a tough time against this guy. Lunges in him, misses the effort. Catches him on the left hook. Wow, on the left hook. Back comes on the left hook. Uh, he's got he's got a jaw of granite for sure. A but he did achieve his goal. He did achieve his goal. He didn't get knocked out. No, he no, wanted he to try that. and knock him out, but Gallant, that's the reason why he is a hard man. When it comes to the state of boxing, he certainly showed a good performance tonight. We'll take a break. Be back with a call for the judges in just a moment. The Woodstock hunting fight for life for about three. Vegas. Epic. Oh, still prefer the real one, mate. Road to Vegas. Yeah. Sure they got prizes here. They got mud balls. And the girls a choice. Oh, where's the luge, bro? True. Oh, smells like Vegas. here at 
the Woodstock Honey fight for life. It's been hard and fast, two hard men. Will it be the Australian or will it be Hicker Elliott that gets the call from the judges? We'll see we'll wait for the judges' scorecard where we have the opportunity. My security chiefs this week, Greg McElman and Glenn Moore, we thank you for all your help and we're ready for the decision. And the mad butcher, living up to being totally mad and having a good time. Good on him as well. Another man who's been battling cancer recently. And doing it in a positive way. Play Mr. Sister in, please. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, that was a war. Make some noise for these boys. What do you say? After three rounds of heavyweight boxing, we go to the judges' scorecards, where we find a unanimous decision winner. Your winner, finally out of the red corner, Paul Kelly! We told the boys back in Sydney, watching my main event, I'm going to go over there and beat the Kiwi, and that's exactly what the tough guy from Sydney has done. So far, the league is making a mockery of uh, Team Rugby. We'll see what happens in the later fights. A lot more action coming up. So it started off even from the get-go, but it was Paul Gallup with those body shots. Barrage set up by a very good left hook. Some good basic boxing here. And he really got stuck into Hicker Elliott right from the first round. Landed more of those heavier punches. Remember, these two heavyweights, over 100 kilos. So there's plenty of steam behind those blows. Hicker Elliott. Struggling to find the range and really land some effective knockouts. Always on the back foot. He, we expected him to try and dominate, but there's those uppercuts from Gallon. Set up by that good jab once again. Nice head movement shot him there as well. You don't do that by accident. He's done his drills and done them well. Trained out of Costa's gym and rocked out, and he rocked the hooker tonight. So they'll both be relieved that, that it's over and they can sit back and relax. Some good skills from both boxers tonight. Let's get some reaction from Stephen McIver ringside. Well, Paul, we asked you before the fight was it going to be the pride of the league, lead, lead, 3-0. What's tougher, 80 minutes of origin or fighting Hicker Elliott? I've got to say, that was one of the toughest things I've ever done. Um, you know, I'm accustomed to playing rugby league. I've been doing it since I've been a kid. And, you know, I guess I'm more than confident in going in and playing 80 minutes. But it's the first time I've done this. And... I've got to admit, my, my legs were gone after round one. It was really hard. What is, the, what is the toughest thing about getting into a ring? Oh, you're here on your own. The bloke over there is pretty big. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I guess you're just starting to get hit. And, uh, you know, we, we both really tried tonight. And I was just lucky to get a win. Good for pre-season? Oh, yeah, I'm fine. Um, I'm having surgery on my elbow this Thursday for a quick clean-out. And, um, yeah, but I'll be 100% come January. Congratulations, mate. Leaguey's up 3-0. Yeah, All right, Hicker Elliott, come here. Come here. Well done, my friend. What was it like facing arguably the toughest man in rugby league? Oh, it's pretty tough, mate. You know, we come out here with intention to box, so hopefully we gave the crowd what they wanted. Disappointed? You're always disappointed, mate. We, we're competitive to people who hate to lose. I know, it's, I know it's for charity, but everybody hates to lose, don't we? <laughs> Yes, we do. Tell me about it. Tell me, what was the plan coming in to try and sort of stop him? Oh, you know, I just had to box him. He, he, he applied a lot of pressure, so full credit to him. He got the win. And pre-season looks good for Hicker Elliott? Yeah, I think so. I think I'd get back to the rugby, so leave the boxing line. You didn't disgrace yourself. Well done, Hicker. Cheers. Thanks, mate. So, bout number three, and it's 3-0 three and to the leagueies in red, as Dean Lonigan from Duco Events predicted at the start of the night. Even though we thought that perhaps the boys in blue were robbed from bout number one with Rainy Ranger, Sir John Kerwin ringside, plenty of other local celebrities and corporates enjoying what is a fantastic hot night of boxing. And of course still to come, Jared McCracken against Carlos Spencer and Big Willie Mason against Troy Flavel, along with Joseph Parker later on tonight. And of course Lauren Eagle and Daniela Smith. So two pro fights and two more big bouts on the Woodstock Honey Fight for life as we go back to Dennis.
some big blows between Paul Gallen and Hicker Elliott. And I'll tell you what, for a man that's having a surgery on his elbow very, very soon, it seemed to be moving very, very freely for Paul Gallen as he put league up 3 0. Well, as I mentioned at the start of the night, rubbing shoulders with all the celeb celebs and the who's who around uh, the Trust Stadium this evening is Tracy Donaldson. Joined by Zach Guilford and Israel Dag, team of the year last night, the All Blacks. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Um, wasn't there last night, I just flew back this morning, but um, yeah, also achievement by the boys. It was a great team effort. Coach of the year as well for Steve Hansen. It's been a really smooth transition, hasn't it, and an epic 2012. It has, it has. He's a great man and I guess, you know, you got all those caliber of players, it's quite easy to transition to that role, but um, he's done a great job, he's, he's brought in new ideas and, um, you know, new routines, so it's been good. And Zach, you said today that you're back having a few drinks and enjoying it, must make nights like tonight a whole lot more fun. Yeah, it does, uh, <laughs> I've got my mate Izzy looking after me here, so uh, it's got to put this one and see the brother Hicker go down, but uh, Callum was a bit of a pit bull out there and probably a bit too tough for him, but... Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll carry on the night. Dean Lonigan said that he spoke to about 50 athletes before he whittled it down to these guys tonight. Were either of you guys approached? Uh, you I got, got caught out by Manu, eh? <laughs> Yeah, I think I got caught out by Manu, but uh, oh, I think I'll give it a miss and stick to the running and uh, rugby because uh, he was pretty tough in there tonight. I think I probably would have got one on the chin and laid out. Yeah, nobody wants to fight the beast. Good on Eric Murray, man. Unbelievable. Mate. I've got full credit for Eric. He get out there and have a full-on fight. It's, you know, credit to the man. You know, they'll probably have paid me $2 million to get out there. I wouldn't fight out there for no, nothing. Well, guys, I know you've had an exhausting year. Massive end of year tour, so I'll let you guys get back to your party tonight. But uh, best of luck for 2013. Cheers, thank you. Thank you very much. It's everyone in the arena giving Eric Murray big props for fighting Manu Vatabe. Well, our first pro fight for the evening has IBF, a former IBF welterweight champion and Daniela Smith from New Zealand taking on a woman you might recognise uh, from the footy show, Lauren Eagle. Uh, she is the WBF featherweight champion. As I mentioned, it's our first pro fight and this is the ladies back of house. Lauren, have you any homework on Daniela Smith? Of course, yep. She's a very credible opponent. She'll probably be my toughest opponent uh, today, but I'm looking forward to it. I'm quite excited. What do you uh, visualise going into this one? Uh, look, I, I've trained my ass off for this, so um, I hope I can just do my best and I know my best is you know, a win, so hopefully I can I can come away with it. We're looking forward to it. Good luck. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, Daniela, there's a little bit of anticipation about this fight. Uh, you know, former world champion yourself up against uh, the new girl, Lauren Eagle. How are you approaching this fight? Um, I'm going in there. I'm, ex I'm uh, expecting everything being thrown at me. Um, I'm expecting a very hungry, but aggressive um, young girl. I mean, she does hold a current world title, so she is actually not a, she is not to be underestimated at all. You're in great nick for a mum. Thank you. <laughs> That's a compliment, take it. You excited? I am excited. I'm really looking forward to this. Yeah, no, no, I really want to get in there and um, put on a good show. And well, women can box, and I, I, want, I want people to see that. They can indeed, as we saw Hayley Holt in her fight against uh, Paige Harrop at one of these events not so long ago. Well, Lauren Eagle said she took up boxing as a coping mechanism for some adversity she was facing in life around four years ago. How, sh how will she cope against Daniela Smith? That's coming up very soon on the Woodstock Honey Fight for Life. Prefer the real one, mate. Brutal Vegas. Yeah. Sure, they got prizes here. They got mud balls. And the girl's a choice. Oh, where's the luge, bro? True. Oh, smells like Vegas. The Prostate Cancer Foundation provides support and advice to thousands of New Zealand men and their families. I got checked and caught my prostate cancer early because of information I got from the helpline. 
By supporting the foundation, you're helping us to educate and empower Kiwi men to make informed decisions about their health. Help the Prostate Cancer Foundation continue the good work. Call 0800 477 678 or visit www.prostate.org.nz to donate now. This part is scheduled for six two-minute rounds in the female lightweight division. This part is brought to you by Woodstock Honey. And now making her way to the red corner, this is Lauren Eagle Women's Boxing made its debut at the Olympics and the corporate fight world women's boxing has been a huge hit so it's great to have a professional fight night with women's boxing here tonight with the Woodstock Honey Fight for Life and a couple of real honeys too, Laura Eagle Eye, Eagle fighting out of Australia, here she is a 24 year old and Mike Angove using this as a chin up fight for her. another title back at Oz. Well, she do well, take this fight pretty seriously. She's up against the former world champion, although she's 40 years old, as someone who really has a lot of fire in the belly and is naturally a bigger girl than Daniela Smith. Many in Australia would say that Lauren Eagle is overrated, and she'll certainly have that put to the test this evening. Well, one thing for sure, she's not overrated in the looks department, and I asked her about that at the weigh-in the other day. She said, good-looking girl. I said, why are you fighting? She said, I just love the fight. I love the competition. So we'll see how she does against Daniela Smith. number one woman in the, the world of water skiing so she's a natural athlete five win two loss and one draw professional boxing record and she's also part of the centre event ambassador part-time model as you say Kim. a model performance tonight perhaps ringside and uh, appears on the footy show as well and also all the Aussies will be hoping for a good old-fashioned rock and roll performance as she comes out to one of the great National anthems of Aussie rock and roll, but of course the Kiwis will be going for Daniela Smith. Yeah, Mike, uh, let me ask you this: How dangerous is she? Has a, a world title fight coming up in a week or so. Why? Why would she take this? I've got, I've got to say, I, I don't know. And it's a dangerous fight going up against a girl who's naturally bigger. Maybe she feels she needs the tune up. Maybe she's and confident. Her Certainly, that's characterised her lead up to into this blue fight. corner, ladies and gentlemen. Please put your hands together for Diamond. Having won an IBF welterweight world title a couple of years ago, she is the pride of boxing alley, Daniela Smith, Chris Martin there as well, of course, trained by Monty Beetham. And she is the real deal, isn't she, mate? Well, look, she's been there. She, she's won a world title in someone else's backyard, so she, she's been there. She's done the hard yards. She's got a good amateur pedigree. And she is confident tonight for her. She's come out of retirement for this fight, and, and in many ways it's her last hurrah. She's hoping this will set her up for a world title, another world title shot. And you've got to be fair to the girl. She's done better than uh, Kiwi boxers, male boxers in recent times. She's actually had the strap round her waist. I saw her at the weigh-in uh, the other day. Uh, when she had the midriff sort of top on, you could see, and this girl must do a ton of sit-ups. I asked how long she'd been training. She said, I trained my whole life. She, she never said, stops, mate. She never. That's exactly what she said, De Brownie. It's just life and blood. Boxing is part of the way she lives and breathes. And of course, back in 2005, she turned pro on a big night with David Tewitt's come back against Tamal Bruce. So uh, she knows how to handle the hype for these big Woodstock honey fight for life. Coming into this ring looking pretty relaxed. Yeah. Of course, all the big-time sports athletes will tell you the more relaxed you are, the more you can focus on your own game plan and not worry about all the BS about what the opponent's going to do when you get into that ring. And remember, this is a professional prize fight. They're not wearing headgear. They're not wearing 16-ounce gloves. This is for real, and it's very, very important. Daniela, making her way into the ring now, wants to have one more world title shot, and that's exactly what she wants. And Lauren, of course, has got her title fight coming up. So if you take a look at the tail of the tape, you see that Eagle is uh, uh, a bit taller. She's slightly heavier. She's 15 Once again, years ladies younger. and gentlemen, this bout is scheduled for six two-minute rounds of professional Lightweight female boxing. It's brought to you by Woodstock Honey. And now fighting out of the red corner. She enters the ring wearing black trucks. She weighed in at 59.9 kgs. She's 25 years old. It's 
stands at 1.74 meters. She hails from Sydney, Australia, and is the former WBF uh, Super Featherweight Champion and the former number one women's water skier in the world. She has eight professional fights with five wins, two losses, and one draw, with three big wins coming by way of KO. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Lauren Eagle! black skirt and she weighed in at 59.8 kgs she's 40 years old and stands at 1.73 meters tall she hails from Auckland New Zealand she is the former IBF welterweight world champion she has 14 professional fights with 11 wins and three losses ladies and gentlemen introducing Okay, Lance will call him to the center of the ring. We'll tell you about the rules. It's the uh, uniform. Fighters in the center ring, please. Ten point must scoring system. There's no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. Touch him up. Good luck to both of you. Fighter cannot be saved by the bell. So, uh, since they're both wearing black outfits, uh, the lady with the darker hair, well, this one here has uh, blonde hair, and that's uh, Lauren Eagle. And she's wearing actual shorts, and, and Daniela Smith with the darker hair is wearing a skirt. So let's see how they go here. This is round number one, scheduled for six rounds. Right away, you see them back and forth, not much landing right now. The aggressor from New Zealand is Daniela Smith. She can't catch up with you. Really kind of considerably slow when she windmills with that big punch, uh, Mike. She's certainly trying to land that overhand right. Just needs to cut off the ring, but she's keen to make an impression early. I think something that will be determined on this fight, and you see a slapping right here, doesn't look like a lot on that from Lauren Eagle. So you better be cautious, because Daniela Smith does know how to move, and you notice she's winging her right hand, pulling it right, which will add a bit of a hook and rolling of the elbow on it. Catches a nice left hook there. The problem is that uh, Eagle is backing up all the time. He can't have any power with that. She's missing with her left hand, so her jab means nothing to Daniela. And Daniela is stalking her, bouncing right in front of her. There goes the right hand of uh, Eagle. It doesn't land again. Everything falls a little bit short. Eagle taps her again. Tries to catch up with the forehead, but Smith comes forward again. Missing kind of awkwardly is uh, uh, Lauren Eagle. Eagle again uh, sets up right in front of her, jab, 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 but she's not doing it technically right, Mike, and you know that. She's not driving off the back foot. He's uh, two minutes right the top there from Smith. Yeah, she nailed her with a pretty good shot, and she's hanging on as Eagle. That right hand uh, caught her, and she's complaining something to referee Lance. Uh, Rebel, but Lance uh, not listening to her at all. And again, she's parting with the jab and backing up, not driving off the back foot, so she's getting no power with her jab, and Smith is able to take advantage of it. Every once in a while, she'll come with that uh, roundhouse right hand. There's a straight right hand down the middle. That was a decent shot, this but it didn't bother uh, uh, Daniela whatsoever. Uh, ever. This time, she's propped off that back leg and, and really popped the right hand out with a bit of authority. Danielle Smith, best to keep the pressure on and use her weight. Now, Although she weighed in slightly lighter, she's naturally the bigger girl, so she would weigh in big right hand there. Yeah, she dropped the right hand right to the left temporal bone of uh, uh, Eagle, and Eagle tries to throw some shots, and she finally lands a decent right hand at the belt. But uh, that is uh, Daniela's round. Well, certainly the, the aggressive throughout that round and landed the cleaner shots. Be interesting to see whether Smith can sustain the pace whether she gets caught on the end of that jab and, and held up at all. And certainly Lauren Eagle, she needs to sit on her punches to get a bit more respect. So here's the action from early on on the round, a good straight right, backing it up, trying to get that overhand right as well. We talked a bit about her being very relaxed coming into the ring. Daniela Smith, she was actually laughing and smiling during that first round too, so extremely confident, and as you said, stalking and dominating the fight right from the get-go, trying to land that big, powerful right. Now, if you notice, before on the replay, you saw Eagle offering her the left shoulder, which means she's trying to ride the right hand. I'd like to see Smith throw a big left hook after that right hand, sometimes straighten up the right hand and again come back with the left hook, and she might find a home for it. Now, when she has that elbow up there, she's in no position. She can be counterpunched so quickly with the right hand, a left hook right hand and you say Mike you're fighting you know what that's all about coming up to round number two Colonel Bob Sheridan here with uh, Clint Brown and of course Mike Eingove and uh, a little bit later on we'll uh, hear from our whole staff as we continue on here tonight
This is the second round, scheduled for six, they're two minute rounds. So they can go. Again, the, the blonde girl is a uh, Lauren Eagle, and the girl with the skirt on with the dark hair and the big tattoo on her right shoulder is Daniela Smith from Auckland, New Zealand. Golden girl from New Zealand, the uh, old black girl from New Zealand. That's Makes it. it simple. <laughs> Makes it simple, all right. And again, much like the first round, Eagle continues to backpedal, backpedal, tries to hold a forearm out, and Daniela just able to chase her down, catches it with a looping right hand. She's very, very busy as uh, Daniela Smith, and that'll catch the eye of the uh, officials, certainly the uh, judges judging this fight. Nice work there, going under the right hand, coming back with the left hook, little cut on the back of the head. Right side of the referee. She's just giving Lauren Eagle no chance to settle, is she? Just all over. Oh, yeah. Glenn, you said something that's really important. Can she sustain it for the entire fight? Because she is 40 years of age, and while she's in magnificent condition, it doesn't make any difference. She's still 40 years of age, and it's tough. And by the way, it's very humid in here, as we mentioned before. It's hot, and uh, as these rounds go by, it's going to be more and more difficult. Uh, oh, oh, that's right. Right. That's the one that Eagle's going to look out for because it's serious power. Left hand, diggy, body shot downstairs. Nice work from Daniela going upstairs, downstairs. Doesn't go head hunting. She just needs to double up on her jab and perhaps, that's a nice clipping right hand, but perhaps throw that jab to the body. Then come over the top with the right hand. Two big right hands to the head, two big right to the body, and she's smiling again as Eagle tries to come back. Well, yeah, she... that beautiful face of Eagle, uh, a little bit battered right now, uh, showing a, a bit of the wear that she's felt off the hands of uh, Smith. Uh, this, this is a, a tough fight for her right now. Yeah, well, she's throwing a nice little step right hand down. The other just needs to adjust their game plan a little bit and not walk into the right hand. Now, but dirty boxing there. And now the other Smith hands is on the belt of oh. and it's starting to heat up. Nice finish for this uh, Eagle, but that's Smith's round as well. My score, by the way, is unofficial. The three judges uh, in attendance will do the official scoring. So a bit of action in the Woodstock Honey fight for life with the women's good right hand by Smith. Backed it up, just grazed the shoulder. Managed to get another one in there. And then later on in round two, there it is. Good connection. Good straight line. Plenty of power. And then back down below.